All right, folks, so today we're going to take a look at this new battery from Power Queen. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery, and it is one of the popular mini batteries. We're starting to see a lot more of these mini batteries out on the market. And I think these are made with pouch cells, not prismatic cells. So it's four batteries. Each one of those batteries is made up of a collection of pouch cells to give you the 12.8 uh, volt battery at 100 amps of capacity. Before we get too far in this video, I did want to say that I was contacted by Power Queen and they asked if I would do this battery review. And of course I said yes. If you're the type of person that's triggered by sponsored videos on YouTube, you might want to go watch some cat videos. This one is branded as the Premium 2, and we'll take a look at the material uh, that comes with this and find out exactly what that means. But what I really like about these mini batteries is that they are much lighter than the standard Prismatic Cells 100 amp hour batteries. And they're a lot smaller, and we'll look at the dimensions of this. Um, comes with a nice carrying case, or carrying handle, and a ABS plastic case. I believe it's ABS. And there's some more writing on the back, and we'll take a quick look at this and see what it says. It says Power Queen Premium 2 Mini, 12.8 uh, volts, 100 amp hours, 1,280 1, watt hours. And there's some information where you can look them up on the internet. And then it comes with a bunch of these different uh, icons, and I'm assuming this one means don't recycle, don't heat up. Uh, this one means to recycle, but don't throw it in the recycle bin, I guess. And then here's some other certifications or accreditations or something along those lines. And it is made in China. I'll show a website where you can pick this battery up and include a coupon code where you can get yourself a little bit of a discount. Uh, what I want to talk about is what it shipped with. And I've been playing around with this battery for a couple of days and I'm super duper happy with it. Um, one, because of its size and then two, because of its performance. These are just M8 bolts that I put on here from another battery that I had. But... Um, it did come with these, and these are terminal protectors that are on the battery. And you use these when you're storing your battery. So that way you don't have any accidental shorting if some metal or something like that falls across the terminals. And then it came with this uh, stuff wrapped up here in this bubble wrap. And I'm not exactly sure what's in here, so let's find out together. All right, let's see what we have. And it is uh, four of the M8 bolts. So in case you lose some or something along those lines, which is pretty handy. And then once you put these bolts on your battery, it comes with these insulators that you put on top of your positive and negative terminals and they just snap on. And then they provide some protection there to help against shorting or anything like that. Um, pretty handy stuff, pretty standard stuff with most batteries these days, but it's great that they include these with the battery. All right, let's uh, get started with the review. So for the capacity test, we're going to use this West Mountain Radio computer-based analyzer. And uh, what this will allow us to do is connect our battery via these power pole ports and provide a current draw from our battery. In this case, we're going to use a 10 amp draw, which is 0.1C of capacity. 0.1C of capacity means 10%. We have a 100 amp hour battery, so that would be our 10 amp draw. The other thing is, is that this device has a USB port for connecting it to our computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up and then we're going to use the software to configure our test parameters. So once I have this all plugged in and doing what it's supposed to, I'm going to go over to the software and show everybody how we configure the test parameters. Pretty simple. Now here's the battery, and what we have here is 10 gauge wire that runs from our analyzer over to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. Over on the right hand side, we have our battery type set for Life po 4, which is lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, and we're gonna hit this detect button. Here you can see that it detects 14.1 volts as the current voltage of our battery. I just took it off the charger about an hour ago. Here it says four cells. Now this battery, as my understanding, is comprised of four cells. Each one of those cells is comprised of multiple pouch batteries, 12 to be exact. So I believe this battery contains 48 pouch cells connected in series and parallel to each other in order to give us the 100 amp hour battery. So now we have this configured. We're going to go to the middle of the screen and it says discharge. Our cutoff voltage, we're going to set it at 10 volts. So once the analyzer detects the battery is at 10 volts, it will stop the test. 
Now, I didn't read the specifications on the BMS or the battery management system in this battery. It may be configured to stop running or stop providing current at a voltage higher than 10. In that case, the battery will shut down the test. Here you can see our test amps are set for 10. And the graph we're going to use is amps over hours. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click the start button. Okay, so we've ran our test using the CBA software and here's the results. When you take a look at it, we have a pop-up window here that says test complete. And our measured amp hours is 103.5, which exceeds the rated capacity. So that's a pass there. Our measured watt hours is 1320.5. The rating on the battery is 1,280, and then our test time took 621 minutes, so a little over 10 hours, about 10 and a third hours. I'm going to hit OK, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. And this is a pretty standard lithium iron phosphate um, discharge curve, so I'm not really surprised here. The uh, test stopped running once the battery voltage dropped to 10 volts. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, you can see the data around our test, but it was the same thing that was on the pop-up. So I'm not really going to go through that. So in terms of the capacity test, we're going to give this battery a pass. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to an inverter and we're going to run some appliances off of it and see how it handles a load test. Okay, here's the Power Queen website. And like I mentioned, there'll be links to this below. But uh, I wanted to show this one. This shows the smaller size of the battery. So here's their standard, which is 13 inches uh, wide. The mini is 10.24. The standard is 8.43, so about 8.5 inches tall. The uh, mini is actually 8.96, so it's a little bit taller. The depth of the mini is 5.4 inches, and the depth of the standard is 6.77 inches. Also, they had a picture of the inside of this battery right here. And you can see here are the different cells. It's a bunch of smaller cells collected together, which is, uh, which is pretty handy because it helps with the energy density and it helps be lightweight. Um, I think I saw somewhere here that, uh, here it is on the side. The weight of the battery right here is 19.77 pounds. And the, tradi the traditional one is about 25 pounds. Uh, which is pretty handy. Here it talks a little bit about the charge cycles, and it says that you get 4,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge, 6,000 at 80%, and then 15,000 at 60% depth of discharge. So that's something to be mindful of. Down here you can see some more specifications and what we're interested in looking at for our tests, that the max continuous discharge current is 100 amps, so that would be 1C. Uh, peak discharge current for five seconds is 280 amps. Now they have some specifications down here for operating temperature. I didn't see anything to indicate that this has automatic shutoff for low temperature discharge and charge current. So the Power Queen battery comes with this documentation kit. I haven't looked at it yet, so we'll enjoy this moment together. Uh, let me just go ahead and open it up. Typically what we see is an instruction manual and then we see a quick start guide in these types of batteries. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. This would be our product or instruction manual. This looks like it's our quick start guide and it talks a little bit about some safety protocols like potentially wearing gloves, some precautions around how you want to uh, connect the battery up and then maybe insulate your wire terminals. Um, it talks about some connection, uh, connecting protocols and some do's and don'ts, which is pretty handy. Um, it also comes with this uh, sheet of stickers, and everybody loves stickers. I love stickers. You probably love stickers. So this is very cool. I'm going to put this over here so I can use those stickers somewhere. Let's take a quick look at the manual, and I'm going to zoom in real quick for this. Okay, looking at the product manual, it talks about the product overview, some components that come with it. it talks a little bit down here about the bolts that uh, you connect to your terminals. It has some safety instructions, some warnings, uh, what to do after charging the battery. And I'm going to roll a picture in now. I charged this with my NOCO Genius 10, which is a 10 amp, hour, uh, amp hour charging device. And um, we use that. We connect it to the terminals and plug it into the wall. And it works really well. So let me roll that picture in. Here's the table of contents. It has uh, different things in here, charging methods, 
uh, how to estimate the capacity. This is really helpful, uh, series and parallel connections. If you have more than one of these, you might want to hook them up in series to get a higher voltage, like a 24 volt battery bank, um, or in parallel to increase your capacity. Here are the parameters, but uh, we saw these on the website, so that's nothing we're going to take a look at. Now, what's handy about these uh, types of manuals is, is that they actually provide a little bit of battery education, which is really helpful if you're new to these types of batteries. Um, they talk a little bit about the charging methods, charging modes. Um, here's about connecting to uh, solar controllers and solar panels, which is something that folks do, or if you want to hook it up to a generator. Um, this is about the battery capacity, and it has a table here that tells you different um, voltage readings and then what the amp capacity is, which is handy. Some information about connecting the battery in series and parallel, if that's not something that you're familiar with. Um, very helpful, very good diagrams. And then here are some information for connecting to an inverter. You need to make sure your inverter has settings that support this type of battery. And some troubleshooting stuff of what to do if it stops working. Very handy stuff, and uh, I appreciate uh, battery companies that include this type of documentation. Okay, so for our load test, what we're going to do is connect our battery up, and it's already connected with these larger cables to our pure sine wave inverter from GoWise Power. People ask why I use this inverter, because it's great. And then we have on the positive lead a Kiwitz clamp meter so we can measure amperage, and then we have connected to the terminals on the back of the inverter the EEV blog multimeter so we can monitor battery voltage. Our Kumin watt meter will measure our watt output from the pure sine wave inverter. What we're going to do now is we're going to connect up the heat gun from Harbor Freight. Everybody loves that. We're going to go ahead and start on the low setting. And when you see the low setting, it draws about 58 amps from the battery. And it's producing about 608 watts from the inverter. And uh, that's what we would expect. Now I'm turning it on high and it's going to go up to about 118 amps out of the battery and around 11, 1200 watts coming out of the inverter. And you can see that the battery works just fine under this amount of load. No problems at all. So now we've hooked up the cheap space heater to the Kumin watt meter and it's on low and I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And we're going to see what our draw is. You can see the amp hours continuing to creep up out of the battery as the heater warms up. Right now we're at about 75 amps. What I'm going to do is turn on the heater, the heat gun that I have connected directly into the inverter. So it's not going to show up on the watt meter. But when I turn that on low, we're now pulling around 150 amps out of the battery. And we did this continuously for a bit and we didn't have any problem at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to high on the heat gun, and that is going to get us close to 200 amps, but I don't think it's, there we go, it failed. And uh, we're not going to be able to test much beyond 150 amps. Keep in mind the continuous output rating for this battery is at 100 amp hours. So after restarting everything, what I want to do is I want to continue the test, but we're going to test at the heat gun on low and the heater on 77 degrees. And this should give us around 150 amp draw from the battery. And we're seeing it creep up, creep up. And there we are at around 155 amps. And this is performing quite well. really like using this battery. I found that I don't have any problems using it under normal conditions. I don't recommend running anything at its specified height or beyond that. It's just not good practice. Anyhow, what I'd like to say is thanks to Power Queen for sending this battery to me for my consideration. Thanks to everybody for watching. It's greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again, everybody.